Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Two weeks ago in our May 12th video forecast, I bumped into kayaker Ken Stark as he pedaled his way out along Rare Bay in search of striped bass. A coastal kayak clash participant for the last couple of years, I know Ken in particular, is happy that we've added striped bass to the CKC this year and a couple of good fish for Ken since we last met. 46 incher and then lo and behold a 47 and three quarter. One was taken on a DMAG pencil, the other a six inch metal lip swimmer from RG Lures. Memorial Day weekend 2022 is here. A busy, busy weekend always at the Jersey Shore and plenty of options for you by boat, by beach, and yes, by kayak as well. And what I hope turns out to be a nice weather weekend, although we are looking at maybe some scattered showers, but if you can think back the last four or five years, it's not Memorial Day at the Jersey Shore without the threat of some showers somewhere. Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. And speaking of kayaking, I took my inaugural paddle onto the fluke grounds in the upper, upper stretches of Barnegat Bay on Saturday, just like we talked about last week. And I had a couple for the stringer, but to be perfectly frank, the three fish limit with the slot fish, it is a little bit difficult to figure out if you've just got your old lines drawn on the side of the kayak. Uh, it's definitely a little bit difficult. 17 and three quarters, 18 and an eighth. Tide stopped, I came in, more than enough for food, but I'll tell you what, it's, it definitely makes a need. With our slot limit, those two fish, those two fluke from 17 to 17.99 inches, you gotta get yourself a good measuring tape, a good ruler to make sure that you're good. But I'll tell you what, that action in the back, summer flounder, fluke, whatever you'd like to call it, it's definitely solid all the way down the Jersey Shore and into the Delaware Bay region and down the Delaware coast as well. We'll talk more about that, but this week, I'm back out at Creekside Outfitters in Waretown where Liza and crew are celebrating their 10th anniversary this weekend. So listen, you're going to gear up for the weekend ahead, fluking. I'm here in front of all the gulp. There's so much gulp here, the, the chatter lure side tracker. So if you are gearing up for the weekend ahead, May 28th, 29th, and 30th, help Creekside celebrate their 10th anniversary. You've got 15% off so many items in this store. And I'll tell you what, when you come in, you'll agree with the sign. It's a lot bigger than it looks outside. You're also gonna have a tent sale, 50% off a select clothing. There's door prizes all weekend. The folks down the road are bringing a Nautic Star to show off. Plus you have some Q&A with various uh, experts. Jeff Evans, Tom P from Rack and Fin Radio is here. It's gonna be a great event. They're right on Route 9. Always take a look for the Creekside sign out front. It changes on a regular basis. It's a sign that changes with the times. I will tell you again though, if you're out summer flounder fishing, that's one thing. I met Liam here. Liam has been fishing for striped bass all over the place, and he tells me the striped bass action is good, locally as well as up on Raritan Bay. But it remains striped bass here at the Jersey Shore, in particular, that so many fight folks are excited about. In what many refer to in this week's edition of the Fisherman Magazine, the digital edition that's available for subscribers, what I got out of the reports this week Words like exceptional, doesn't get any better than this. And I had a little dose of best bite in years. Let's go right to that magazine and the latest reports. Gregory's in Sa uh, Summers Point memorialized on the cover of this week's edition from Captain Jim Frieda of Shore Catch Guide Service, who also let me know this week that the new Tony Maja Drift Spoons are killers. He said he picked up a case of Tony Maja Drift Spoons, put his friend Jeff into a personal best, a 46 incher in the last few days. Now I did a little un unboxing myself on a Tony Maja order. A lot of talk about these spoons on stripers in recent years. You know you have those nickel flutter spoons and of course now the Maja drift spoons to complement your trolling Maja spoons. But those things on a heavy duty TA or dual lock snap, 50 pound um, mono liter fluoro if you'd rather, but dropped, jigged down, allowed to flutter down, bring them back up, make sure you've got connection and drop them down slow. These things are killers when the bunker are around and stripers are all over the bunker. Now I spoke to Liza, she's getting a shipment of the Tony Maja drift spoons coming in, but right now if you're looking to deploy them outside of Barnegat Inlet, you've also got the Jigging World model as well. You definitely wanna check that out because a lot of the reports that we've been getting 
on striped bass in terms of jigging this year have come on those spoons. Now, longtime field editor Nick Honachewski said in his report this week at thefisherman.com, he said, quote, the best spring surf fishing in years. In fact, proving that point himself, he was down in Cape May County uh, earlier this week, did a night shift back to back, and on both nights he had teen size weak fish, caught them on black bombers. He was surprised, but the weak fish out front along those jetties in Atlantic, in Cape May County, they're there for the taking at night. And if there's anyone that knows about the weak fish fishing in the state of New Jersey, it's Frank Rosinski, host of Wonderful World of Weak Fish, who's showing off with those pinkies can produce out back. Uh, think the finesse, think the bubblegum zooms, uh, those various soft plastics, even the Kettle Creek swing shads, but those weak fish are on the move. Another natural offering that you might want to consider and try with your fisherman subscription this past winter, remember the gift, remember what I gave you? Well, I'll tell you, those fight clubs will help you catch them up. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing that nothing says no to fish bites. Let's stick with that South Jersey bite for a moment down south of us, Atlantic and Cape May counties, but Brigantine and Atlantic City, that Absecon Inlet area still seems like the place to be for personal best striped bass reports. In fact, I heard this week from Matt Merkel. He's been driving up from Maryland, uh, University of Maryland on a regular basis after class just to catch some of those striped bass in the Absecon Inlet area. He told Andy at Riptide this this week. He goes, hey, I got one for the hutch, 50 pounds leader it snapped I dove into the inlet and bear hugged the fish lived to tell the tale and landed this beautiful striped bass this is a good sign one of the things that we talk about year in and year out of late it seems is like the stripers bypass the Atlantic and Cape May County coast not this year the bass are there if you're heading down the shore this weekend down into Cape May County Chris Webb said his buddy Tom Graminia he hit the Ocean City surf over the weekend with clam also found a good one. You also have solid black drum fishing going on right now in the Delaware Bay. John Morgan caught this one the other day, letting his Minn Kota do the work instead of the anchor. Now, one thing that John told me is the whole fleet was out in the morning, not much of a bite, but those guys who persevered at some point, the fish showed up on the machine and they started snapping. So yeah, you have drum, you have striped bass, weak fish, and good flounder fishing, summer flounder, in those back bays and sounds throughout Central and South Jersey. Congratulations, by the way, to top angler in the Joe Morris Memorial Tournament out of Lewis Harbor Marina in Delaware over the weekend, Matt Maffa, who narrowly edged Matt Mitchell for first place, he had a 4.15 pounder. Congratulations to all you winners and all the folks who participated in the Joe Morris Memorial Tournament out of Lewis Harbor. You helped the folks there hit their $15,000 goal from entry fees, over 500 anglers, donations to date for the Pancreatic Cancer Network, uh, the, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network in honor, in the name of Joe Morris. Also, I should say congratulations in this area to my alma mater, Southern Regional High School and the Rams Fishing Club for battling their way to a win in the battle on the beach out there in Barnegat Light last week against Lacey Barnegat and the Mates Academy. Some graduating Southern Regional angler will receive a scholarship award from the LBI Surf Fishing Classic for their fall matriculation. Now, when I was down in this area, I grew up in Barnegat, not far from here. Everybody down here went to Southern Regional. Now you've got Central, Barnegat, Lacey. It's getting bigger, man, it's getting bigger. I saw where one LBI local headed up to Seaside this week. Bayside Dave decided to do a little plug-in in Seaside Park, ended up with a nice flatty on the beach instead. Taped out at 21 inches, this one took his teaser. So you gotta think, if you're looking to work those fluke in the suds, they have to be there. Dave's a good indication of that. Some of the things that I like to do is I'll just pack some of the gulps in the envelopes, put them in a backpack. I don't have to worry about grabbing bait and just get some jig heads, some bucktails. This is a large one, but one of the spros and just cast around in some of those potholes in some of the uh, shallow waters and along the jetties, if you can find it. But certainly an option this weekend if you're hitting the beach for a while with family to look for some of those summer flounder fluke in the wash. And that's Mammoth 
Ocean, Atlantic, and Cape May County as well. There's also solid bass to be found there in the suds, Ocean and Monmouth County as well. Brian let me know this week that he hit this 37-incher 37 37-incher 37 at Island Beach last week. He said he's not sh sure how the circle hook ended up hooking the striper's tail. But hey, caught it anyway. Do remember that folks, if you're heading out to fish for stripers this weekend, you're using chunks of bunker, using clam, which is working so well, you gotta employ the circle hook. The circle hook is gonna help us with catch and release if you're getting some of those bigger stripers or the smaller ones, but it is mandatory now that if you're using natural baits to fish for striped bass, you need to do your rigging on circle hooks. Do of course this weekend try to make some time in those three days ahead to enjoy some fishing with the family. Captain Andy from Riptide Bait and Tackle in Brigantine, he got out with his favorite first mate, um, Carolyn, this week, and they boxed up a few before things really got hectic. Hint, hint, my children, Samantha, Alex, you're coming down for this weekend. I hope you're watching this video forecast, and I hope you know that we're gonna spend a little bit of time fluke fishing as well probably from the kayak, and I hope you enjoy that. But I'll tell you what, Bo Sleater, he got out with his son Hunter this past Sunday, the 10-year-old showing off his three fish bag from out behind Sea Isle City. Certainly more than a mouthful right there. Bluefin, biscuits, and personal bests that assuredly will get better with age. We'll look at NOAA offshore weather forecast as well in two minutes, but first, the Pocono Outdoors report. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, bass season doesn't officially open till June 11th here in Pennsylvania, but guys are still out getting on some great bass. Now, keep in mind that all fish have to be immediately released until the season opener, but there's still some great fishing out to be had. I checked in with Eric Goodstall, who was out doing some trout fishing, but he managed to get in a couple of these great largemouth bass. Now, he says those inline spinners, you know, those rooster tails, are a great tactic in those high-pressured areas where things have been a little bit hectic lately, and even those creek settings to pick up a few largemouth where, where they happen to be. Now also I checked in with Brian Swingle over there at Five Mountain Outfitters. He was kayaking out on the Susquehanna and he kind of said the same thing. The smallmouth though have been fantastic out there. Uh, he's been picking up a couple really good ones. A couple of key techniques is some deep diving crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, and Ned rigging seem to be producing smallmouth really well out in the Susquehanna. Now the past couple weekends uh, Josh Taylor and I have been out on Beltsville here right, right behind me and we were out trying to get some striper ourselves. Now the striper were a little bit harder to find but we found the smallmouth extremely active and but the, the artificial bite was a little bit slow so we switched up to some live bait you know uh, drifting some of those live alwies and the smallmouth seemed to be all over them so it was a good tactic there when things get a little bit slow here in our local lakes. Guys have all got a little bit more to go and you know the season's in full swing bass will be open but for now get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania I'm George you're poking away outdoors guy. If you're looking to give a shot with the uh, side trackers from Chatter, maybe the Sterling wide trackers this weekend, it looks a little sketchy on the offshore grounds from the Hudson to the Baltimore. Uh, for the next couple of days, it seems like we're talking about like the four to six range, but things are starting to settle down and certainly by the end of the weekend, I'm sure some guys would still go out. Uh, mostly light winds, but I'll tell you by the end of the weekend, things to really start to drop out on the offshore grounds but you do have that opportunity. We do have some bluefin reports, and as a matter of fact, Chris at Captain Bill's in Point Pleasant said bluefin tuna bust open. He busted open on Saturday. Large tuna reported on the surface on some of the inshore grounds. Now the highlight there at Captain Bill's for the weekend was a 225 pounder. That was brought in for weigh-in by TJ and crew on the end game tournament team. Hey, by the way, tournament team, that's the second bluefin report I got from the Endgame guys in the last month. We did our report last week from outside Jersey Coast Shark Anglers headquarters for bluefin fever. Those guys moved that tournament back a couple of weeks. The uh, actual event now is going to be held on June 4th. Hopefully we have some really good bluefin reports on the grounds at that point. The captain's meeting at JCA, JCSA headquarters is now going to be on Friday, June 3rd. You can go to jcsa.org for that information. I did speak to Willie Egerter of the Dauntless out of Point Pleasant on Friday. He said some of those bluefin may be along the inshore and mid-range uh, uh, grounds gobbling up some of those sea bass. We are loaded with sea bass, but that's what he felt some of the bluefin, he has seen them 
while uh, bottom fishing, seeing them at the surface and they're coming up and taking them. Uh, also talk to some folks if you're thinking about heading out, certainly they're talking about them at the Hudson Canyon, but I might even think closer to like the BA buoy or out there near the mud hole if you're so inclined in the next few days. By the way, Fox News was out at Point Pleasant they were doing a, a bit last Friday, spoke to Captain Willie aboard the Dauntless. They were talking about the plan by the Biden administration to shut down recreational fishing for porgies in federal waters. And that has a lot of the for hire captains especially worried. One of the big reasons why is the for hire captains in the state of New Jersey that get the federal permits to take passengers out past three miles to fish for fluke and sea bass and porgy, well, if porgies shut down in federal waters, the for hire captains with those permits are not allowed to fish for porgies because they have to default to whatever the federal regulations are. That's the situation that we're in. You can find the link in the des description of this week's video for the full national story and take a look at that video of Captain Willie, John DePersonaire from Viking Yachts and some others speaking with Fox News. Now there was a group letter that was sent to NOAA Fisheries by states from Massachusetts to Delaware. It also included the state of New Jersey that they were calling the closure of the recreational scup fishery in federal waters unnecessary, ineffective, and disruptive. I agree. Let's see how NOAA responds. As you'll see in the feature, if you go watch that, there's no justifiable biological reason for the closure, and in my opinion, it's purely punitive on the part of NOAA fisheries. As it stands now, however, you do have access to porgies until further notice. Hopefully we'll find out pretty soon in the next few days, perhaps another week or so, but I'm hoping that NOAA Fisheries comes to their senses and says, yes, that one inch increase in porgy that you, that you administered this year is more than enough to keep you guys porgy fishing into the future. Sea bassing, that of course has its ups and downs. It depends on if you're fishing for, uh, fishing with dropping clams or if you're doing some of the slow pitch jigging. But the head boats like the big Mohawk in Belmar, they're Mohawk and biscuits. In central Jersey, you've got the Jamaica too out of Brielle. They're hitting those sea bass. And of course, sea bass are still the star in South Jersey for the head boats like the starfish heading out of Cape May County. Now I expect the rails to be fully lined this weekend as folks get offshore looking for some of those biscuits, those humpbacks, and trying to find yourself a nice fish fry for, for the Memorial Day weekend ahead. So I'd get on board and join a few of your newest friends and get out there and enjoy the action. Lastly, do not forget what this holiday weekend is truly all about. Memorial Day is a time to remember those fallen soldiers, the brave men and women who gave their all, gave the greatest sacrifice of all for this great nation of ours, the greatest country on the planet. God bless the United States of America. Hey, I heard from my man Pedro last week. This young angler is working his way up the personal best ladder. This young tsunami ambassador got another one, a keeper from the Keensburg Pier. Another option, if you're looking to work the night shift like Pedro and his father, he got the assist from dad, but this was all Pedro putting the, putting the boots to this big striped bass. I hope they'll be out in enjoying the weekend with family, uh, the same as I hope you will be as well. Honor the heroes, but also enjoy this weekend. You got a little extra time. You're gonna have time with the family. So drink a toast to our fallen heroes. Celebrate the United States of America, and by all means, catch them up, enjoy the weekend. And if you're gearing up, make sure you come out here to Creekside Outfitters to take advantage of their 10th anniversary sale. I will see you again next week, right here at thefisherman.com. Here's the Dreamboat Fishing standings as of May 26th. Garrett Weir is holding first place with 20 points. Bob NTC is in second with his 15 pound bluefish. Bobby C. Farelli in third and a new fourth place holder back from last year is Andreas Brundler with nine points. New to the board is Peter Jenna with a second place porgy at 2.97 pounds. Joe Menio with a three pound sea robin. Sean Brownyard from the Great South Bay with a 2.9 81 pound sea robin and right behind him is Fernand Ledge with a 2.8 pound sea robin. Now's the time for a great bluefish and flu catches. So folks, the categories are wide open. You're bound to get on the board. Good luck. 
The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action.